Welcome to the What's Up Food Podcast. We're back. Or right, I'm, I'm, I'm always back. I'm, I don't go nowhere. I'm always here, man. They got me here on a, <laughs> on a lifetime contract. What's up, food? Rodrigo's back from Mexico. Yeah, man. What's cracking, dog? What's up, bro? People thought you're not gonna come back. <laughs> what are they talking about? I was just gone for a week, but the only thing was is from Wednesday to Wednesday. And my flights were in the day. So you went I, there for a wedding, right? Uh, no, my cousin graduated on a Saturday, so we went for that. But wanted to spend three days beforehand, three days after. You took your lady with you? Yeah, man. You invited her or she invited herself? No, I invited her, fool. <laughs> what don't we be? If you got a lady, what are you going to go to places by yourself, dog? You know what I mean? Okay, a lot of people do that, bro. <laughs> you can't be wow, doing that in bro. these days. Then somebody else I is going to... I eat at the best restaurants, dog, then somebody, by myself. Then somebody gonna, else is going to tuck in your lady, dog. What's <laughs> up, food? Did you guys eat anything good over there? Dude, the bombest food ever. What you have? Dude, everything, dog. Wow. But a lot of people want to know what everything is. Everything is Oaxacan tamales, mm. Mexican tamales. Oaxacan tamales, what are those made out of? Um, Well, they wrap them in a in a Are they color? Uh, no, Blue? probably the same, but they're different. They're like square, mm. opposed to being like oval. Also had some bomb ass stuff that I had last but, time. Was, but uh, the tamales were square, like they make it with banana leaf or, or corn? Yeah, uh, banana leaf, because uh, it's down, mm. down there in the south, south. But one of the bombest oh. things that I had last time, that's a bomb, I don't know if you ever had it, was... Uh, uh, chicharrones de pulpo, which is a uh, fried uh, uh, octopus. No, which was bomb as hell, dude. And I've only had that once. I always thought that uh, octopus tastes like uh, hard. It's rubbery. It nah, dude. It was a nice and soft, but they do it enough, dude. Um, so uh, all right, I'll keep on going because there's about twelve things, dog, that I had that were bomb as fuck. I waiting for more of the octopus. The octopus, bomb as hell. Um, they, it's the um, not the tip tips, but from like where the uh, the hand the starts suction, waving. The suction part. All that part and part. Fried with flour or no, no, no. With uh, I don't know what. I think it's just lightly fried, dude. But they come out crisp, dude, on the outside, and you cut it. It's just nice and soft in the middle, dude. It was bomb. I had it last time at this place called the Sonora Grill. This time it was in Porfirio right there in Polanco in Mexico City. What do they serve it with? Um, they serve it with uh, guacamole. They serve it with salsas. They serve it with the lime and tortillas so you can make tacos and a side of refried, refried black beans, dude. And a little bit of uh, dried cheese on the top. Not so much queso fresco, but I think it's like uh, dried panela. Not your first time having that? Second time. But yeah, but your, your lady liked that? Yeah, she Did was she down like with it. seafood? Yeah. I don't know, Michael, when I used to have um, the Siete Mares, the, the La Super Mixta. La Tostada Mixta? Yeah, man. And they had pieces, it would have pieces of um, octopus. It was always hard. It was always hard, like not rubbery, you know? And one thing why I think it was used to be hard because that shit wasn't fresh, dog. No? Yeah, that's another reason. That's what I believe. Because yeah. I've ate at the same spot before. Yeah? Yeah, and then, si no la curan bien, because that stuff right there, you know, they do it with lime, right? And if they don't leave it long enough, it's not going to soften up as much, dude. Do you have some good tacos? The do the bombest tacos ever, dog. They don't get better than Mexico. Not like when, when people say, oh, it was tremendous. It was, it nah, went deep. It the, was re they were really nah, good. Nah, fool. It is fucking sucky. Would you compare them to like, as good as what? Which ones in LA? Dude. Estrella? I don't want to be a dick or nothing, but you can't, like, you know, that thing is all different, huh? Incomparables, dog. The tortillas were made there, too? The tortillas are made there. And the thing is, with the tortillas in Mexico, fool, and not all of them now, because now a lot of stuff's getting imported to the ranches, the tortillas are made there fresh, and they don't have any preservatives, because those are the tortillas that after they become warm, they harden up. Yeah. So they're that much better, dude. They taste different, dude. I remember the tortillas, man. You know? Yeah, when, when when Lisa makes some um, flour tortillas, they're soft once we eat them, but once she puts them in that bag, next day they're super hard. Yeah, dude. I mean, you can revive them and bring them back to life on the comal, but when they come out fresh, dude, that's the best way to have them, dude. And um, that's why some totally, people, dude. Like if you want them to, if you want those type of tortillas to go, they would just cook them a little bit, and then you, you just finish warming them up in your house. Oh, to fuck keep warm. yeah, dude. And. <laughs> Well, that's Mando, uh, Mando's the tortilla king, man. I eat tortilla. I, 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 How's I the eat, butter? Was that different? Chinese food with tortilla. Or buttery? I didn't, uh, dude, I didn't really Did taste butter any butter. Food? Uh, I don't think as much, dude. <clears throat> I think it's uh, nothing that I can recall. That, you know, when you get tor tortillas, they don't want to serve you butter with it, dude. You know what I mean? Not like here. Did you have any um, 
Any liquid, any liquidos, any no. shakes? Good no, shakes? no, no, none of that stuff. But that always tears up shakes when you're in Mexico, um, man. One thing that I had that I didn't have last time was I had cochinita pibil, which was bomb at three spots. But what, I had what, a. What is that? Cochinita pibil is um is for, from the Yucatan um area of Mexico. From Yucatan Peninsula. But it's a uh, pork, but it's marinated in like a reddish uh, chile. And uh, it's just everything, dude, put together, and they mix it all up, and it's nice and soft. That place over there off of Hillhurst has it, but it's not as good as that thing. No way. It's dry, dude. Oh, you're talking about that place. Um, that little taco stand next to the yeah, street from uh, el, el, um, Yucatan. Yucateco. Yucateco. Yeah, yeah, that place. That bomb at red food. Yeah, that stuff's good, but it just isn't as good as that place, dude. You know oh, I, mean? I know I know where you're going there now. And it's fucking bomb. But what I didn't have last time Couldn't was— Couldn't have like— um, um, Carne de restaurada, right? Yeah, it's almost it's mole-ish. Pork. Yeah, it's pork. Yes. And it's, I think I it's a- I love that shit. And it's not the whole, the pork when it's old. I think it's like a young little pig, dude. So that's much more softer and stuff. Yeah, man. I think Lisa has perfected that red sauce when she makes the tamales, when she makes mole. No, when she makes, po- when she makes pozole. Yeah, because that's what I'm, it's yeah. almost mole-esque. It has a leaf, huh? Like yeah. a leaf? They, they use like it- A basil leaf or something. They, like. they, when they pack it in there, they put mm. that in there. But um, but what I didn't have last time was a manita de puerco, which is the hand. The paw? Yeah, the hand right there from the, the wrist to the little. And what they do is they bake it in that stuff, and it comes out super soft, dude. The tendons in there. We're talking the big, the, 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 the baked. La manita, the front the, the feet. The hand of the pig, right? Yeah, yeah. Not the, not the hind ones. And it's yeah. super bomb. And I've had them before. They fry it with what? With butter? No, they they bake it. Not with butter. Just with that stuff that they're doing, the same thing, cochinita pibil. Because they, they got the nails off and all that? No, no, it's there, fool. Everything's there. You suck all that shit off. You slice it off? Yeah, you put it in there in your mouth. There's meat off that rubbery. It's the tendons, the little meat, the little oh, fat. Oh, chicharron. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, but it's man. not chicharron, dude. That's the thing. Because I've had it with chicharrones before in carnitas where they put those in there. Because everything gets used, even the fucking tail. And um, it's really good. But I think this is even better. But that was bomb that I had. Well, they're like stuff, delicious food in in um in uh, Mexico City, that it's hard to copy. Like you don't see it in LA too much because it's illegal or it's just the time it takes to prepare. There just wouldn't be enough time to to make money. There's not out enough of it. time. Um, I think uh, a lot of stuff that's all hipstered up and like you know like made what popular here, thing, like that one. The, well, probably the pork hand would be the, tough. Yeah, that because and it's hard to make it because they make it in a different. I think they deep they put it in like a deep thing. Yeah, we can't ground. do that here no more. Remember it, that man set that over there well, in Texas. North? Well, in Texas, yeah. remember I went to go eat that um, um barbacoa. Yeah. They can't do it there just because Texas health law forbids them to put stuff under the dirt. Well, so some people get away with it, huh? Yeah, but I, I'm sure you can't go advertising that shit. Maybe at your house know. you can do it. But um, that was bomb as hell, dude. Um, the tacos that are made out of uh, the tortillas were made out of nopal. Oh man, they were green. Green tortillas. Yeah, damn. And um, and that Fist was bump on that one because that sounds good. At least yeah. Not. And those were corn tortilla made out of um, cactus. And they were green. And those were, I guess, from the Oaxaca area. But that was at that particular restaurant, Porfirio's in uh, Polanco, which we tried like three or four different regions of food. But um, that was bomb as hell, dude. What, what kind of stuff? Mexican food that's considered Mexican food and now uh, over here, it doesn't even exist over there in Mexico. Burritos? No, bur- there's there's no burritos. There's just tacos. On such thing, huh? No, the burritos are Amer- North American. They're, well, even though Mexico is North America. But nachos? Um, nachos are American, dude. Exactly. Yeah, man. those are, that's not Mexican food. Yeah, started in um supposedly the, started the border in like, right there across by uh, Juarez and uh, all that. And stuff. I seen the original border nacho. City. It was a chip with a cheese and a jalapeno. Yeah, suppose it was like uh, I think we read it up one day. Every chip had quesadillas? a piece of cheese on there. Quesadillas, yes. They like quesadillas, but different, huh? like a tostada, huh? y- Almost. Yeah, huh? they they cook them a little bit more where the cheese is like falling out of yeah. it. Yeah. Now they have one that's called a quesadilla gringa. I saw on someone's page that um, the, well, the guy Chewy, the guy that fool sent you a pin. Oh yeah, yeah, the video. Saca el sol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That fool. Yeah, that fool. He went to a place where they're making quesadillas, but the quesadillas were not like ours. It was like a, it was like it was the they were barbecuing, so they put a flat corn tortilla with a, with Monterey, a lot of Monterey Jack, and they just they just let that motherfucker bake, and they just put meat on top. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. There's a lot, and like I don't know if that's called a mulita, but they have a lot of those mulitas, those are corn tortillas. But they also had a lot of gorditas like that, opposed to the ones. Yeah, that gorditas are, in Mexico City. Yeah, dude. Bomb different dude, than, than uh, Grand Central Market. Dude, it's like, dude, they're good there at Grand Central Market. They're really tasty. They're really delicious. But this is just to the next level, fool. You can't compare it. It's just it's like just they're soft and crunchy at the same time. That right? time, dude. But the lady that's making the gorditas has been making it since she's been 30 years old and she's 70, dog. That's and the right thing. there, how already made, right? Huh? Dude, it's dude. 
No prepping shit. It's no, there, huh? No prepping, dude. It's all it's all like second nature to him. Like for instance, he's mm. uh um the last day I was there, we had um the first time we had um it's a show, Pastor. huh? Oh, it's a, definitely a show. It's art, dude. We had um uh, Taco del Pastor, which we didn't really yeah. have because you know we're running around doing a bunch of other shit. So the dude has the pineapple on top, the onion on the bottom, the meat in the middle. You got that? Yeah, but he's he's waiting for everything to get crispy. Then he's doing a cut and get you a taco. After he does that, he with his sword. I posted a little video on Snapchat. He snatches a piece of fucking uh, saw with, with the machete. Uh, snatches a piece of pineapple, a slice, puts it on that taco, dude. Whether you want two, four, or no, orden is usually five. Let me tell you, man. I, I've eaten a lot of tacos al pastor, and um, vegan and chicken, v- vegan and non-vegan. And I've seen that pineapple on top. I've seen the onion on top. The taquero has never cut a piece of onion and a piece of pineapple and put it in my taco. And I'm thinking, why? I always thought that that was just for looks. But he's never hooked me up like that. Do I got to ask over here in America? I guess you have to ask, fool. But fool, that, that sounds good. Dude, like, let me tell you. Hawaiian fool. like a little bit of me. I don't mean, like, I remember eating, um, I think with Lisa, we were eating a pineapple pizza. And I, and I was like pretending I liked it, but I took all the, I was throwing the pineapple <laughs> away. You know, I wasn't Bake. used to. I wasn't used to that. You know, I was just throwing the pineapple away. I just wanna, I don't wanna order two pizzas, whatever. But man, that sounds good. I like pineapple pizza when the shit gets a little bit burnt. Now I, now I do, water. man. Now pineapple. I do. And what's the problem with people having, because uh, I've seen a lot of memes of people who are anti-pineapple pizza, dog. I think it's delicious myself. I think you got a nice piece of ham, forget about it. Oh, yeah. But um, how, how about hopefully. torta de jamón? You saw um, them? We seen them, but we didn't have uh, tortas de jamón. We had tortas de chorizo from um, Toluca, which is the chorizo is red. Like, you know, normal yeah. chorizo is red, but this one's red, red, like almost crayon red. And it's made of pork or beef? Pork. And that's a different type mm. of chorizo from that part of Mexico. This is right next to it. Right but next they part make it right there with their hands, huh? Uh, I seen it. They were all, they hung it up, rolled it up, and then you know, they slice it and then they cut it up. When, when you had it, taste, when they, uh, when when you ate it, did you eat it like chorizo style, or like ground beefy, or in a little ball? No, they had it in a bolillo. They cut oh, the bolillo. They put man. a little bit of mayonnaise. They fucking put it down on the grill, cooked that up. They put slices of avocado, slices of tomato, slices of onion, lettuce, and then the chorizo in there with so, uh, so a layer of beans. Fatter, bro. No, I did come fatter. For I've been decompressing the last week. <laughs> and I was eating all those vegetables. That's why you ain't no bread in now. And I'm oh, you. it was just too much. We had so much cheese, fool. So <laughs> much cheese. You didn't bring any? So much meat. Nah, fool. How about machaca? Uh, none. You I had no machaca over there? I just, dude, I, I didn't try any. I um, Oh, you know what I did? I had a machaca on my eggs, but the fresh mm, machaca. That's the best, bro. Not the shredded dry one, like Sonora style. How about, um? How about, there's a lot of mixtures of nationality now, so they're like, are they mixing like Thai food with fat Mexican style? One thing, uh, a fusing, I don't really know too much about that. What I did see, there's a lot of Chinese restaurants and more Thai, but supposedly the Chinese food in Mexico is off the hook, but we just didn't have enough time to try Pizza. it. Pizza? Pizza's everywhere, dude. But it's all like, dude, it's a 24-hour city, dude. Everything, Thai food, Chinese food, Indian food, Russian food, all types of shit, dude. You stay at a hotel? No, I'm my cousin's pad right there. Yeah, though, dude. The, but the food is, dude, it's just different, dude. I mean, I don't know the last time you went to Mexico or Never. whatever. But... Be, if you remember, be, the smells are different. It just smells better, dog. It just it, it's it's there, fool. Um, I remember there was that. I just compare that. I, just went out, no, at the, I was at a at a farmers market in in um, Tijuana, Mexico, and we were buying like a lot of stuff, man. We we're buying a lot of stuff, cheese, a lot of stuff. Stocking up. And then we went to this place with all candy, man. Nothing but bees all over the place. Yeah, it's all dulce, dog. Like, and then um and then the pan dulce. The guy opened up the cup. The he took the blanket, the sheet off the pan dulce to show us. Fucking bees came out of nowhere, bro. Attacked it. But some good ass pan dulce. It was warm, bro. Well, under that's, that blanket. We did try some over there, dude. And it's just, it just, dude. Like here, after a little while, dude. Wherever you get it, it gets a little hard. It's good, whatever. Over there, dude, you bite into it and it's fucking soft. It melts in your mouth, dude. Over here, stay, over here, when you buy a concha, it is a concha, bro. It's hard, dog. <laughs> you can hit somebody with it. And How about gancitos? Dude, we had some gancitos, too, and we brought some bad, dog. There's no more, dog. Well, you freeze them, huh? Uh, we didn't freeze them here. We just brought them all just, like, style in packs of three because that way they don't get smashed. But, um, yeah, man. It Bomb as fuck. Man, before we get to um, our shout-outs, man. Yeah, man. We, we, we were at the Tempe Improv last week. It was hilarious. Sold-out shows. Chris Torino out there. Yeah, bro. Bro, I'm a different dude now, bro. I lost a little weight, bro. I'm like a kid again, what bro. What weight you lost, Chris? <laughs> bro, I lost like a body, bro. Yeah, you look so skinny. I'm tiny, bro. 
He just happened to be here, huh? Bro, I haven't been this happy in like six months, bro. Yeah, man, you just happy you're not at Disneyland, huh? <laughs> this motherfucker, this fool broke me. Bro, I love the Disneyland too, bro. I know, bro. All right, man, good to have you here, Chris. What's <laughs> up, fool? Oh, man, we had fucking, we had um, Martin Rizzo at, and Tempe, and that fool was um, doing all the, bit, all the taping of um, the, the behind the scenes and taking photos, you know, because sometimes, man, you, you, I don't have time to do all that stuff, man. You got to get somebody to put a video up, let everybody know what's going on. You know, we're happy. We're, we're living life to the fullest, having a good time. No more stop, motherfuckers. Yeah, so man. what's up, fool? So the fucking Saturday night, man. I don't know what's going on. Everybody says their goodbyes. I meet Martin Rizzo in the morning. This fool's talking about he met a cougar. <laughs> talking about he's, she's 50 years old, twice his age. So what happened, bro? You tear it up. Hey, I took her to, I took her to, I took, first of all, he's sharing a room with Rodrigo. So I heard, I, he, he told me that he took her to uh, the room and Rodrigo was sleeping. And then like, he goes, somebody else in here? And as soon as he, she said, is, the, is someone else in here? Oh. He started farting, hot dog. I, dude, you I'm didn't a, know, right? I, I knew, I knew what was going on because the thing is like I can get woken up right away with any little creak of light and a little a mouse walks on the door. I want to exterminate it, right? Little so, rabbit, <laughs> rabbit stomp. <laughs> Binky. <laughs> so this fool comes in. All right, cool. It's cool if you want to get laid or whatever, but uh, doesn't this lady have a house, fool? Or yeah. What? She's a native, dude, a teepee or something in the hallway. Whatever. It's cool, dog. Like a reservation. Her... Yeah, <laughs> tonight. She's 50, bro. I know, dude. She should like... already have inheritance money, dog. What's going on here? 50, man. Have stayed in a Burger King bathroom. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, dude. Digital hey, man, style. this is our parks where we were over. That's what I'm saying, dude. Go take her underneath the gazebo. Take her in a car. <laughs> yeah, that's what. she didn't have a car either. What's you know what? Or what? Which way by least they're going to green room. That's what I'm saying, dude. Fuck. There's a lock yeah, on the door, man. Right? You know what? I was going to say for an hour. We had an hour to bring someone in the green room. Oh, bro. dude. Right? Even backstage. Yeah, dude. Something, man. This the fool, restroom. This fool would be romantic, but he wants to light candles. <laughs> yeah. Over there, boy, she's smelling farts in her uh, feet. So anyways, I knew somebody was coming, but I'm not hitting, you know what, up? whatever, dude, do your business, dude. I'm going to just go to sleep, but I can't sleep. So as soon as she opens no, the door. She saw, what happened was, bro, she looked over on your side, bro, oh, this guy's really young, man. He fucking, he made a fort. <laughs> but it was you laying down. <laughs> so I was covered up, though, but as soon as she came in, she washed her hands. I heard the little speaks and stuff, whatever. Like, psh, psh, okay. So I, oh, is that a fort? And I, <laughs> I sleep, dude. But I sleep only in my underwear, my tidy whitey. So I just took the covers off. Yeah, bro, you sleep like like fucking Mil Mahara, bro. <laughs> you sleep like my dad, bro. With no mask. What it's underwear? hot, dog. It gets hot. And it's 65 degrees because I keep the fucking AC on kicking, you know what I mean? It was 100 outside, bro. So oh, my God. Our room, our, our room never got higher, low, lower than 72. It was brutal, dog. That sun was hitting my windows hard, Oh, dog. my God, dude. Put the couch up and block that fucking sun ray. So she walks in the door, she washes her hand, and I see her like, I can feel somebody. I can feel the energy of another body in there. You can just know, bro. And I feel that little fool's acting different, too. He's like trying to be quiet, turns on the light, then turns <laughs> it off. It's like, motherfucker, use the light from your cell phone. Be slick, dog. So I take the fucking, I just take the covers off. I point my ass in the air because I had all that gas from Mexico City left, dog. Because I was eating all these fucking fruits and vegetables trying to fucking flush it all out. I fucking point my ass in the air, dog, so it can like fucking hit the wall, then Ricochet off the other wall and then hit her in the face, fool. You know what I'm saying? I'm like a sniper, bro. I, I, I let a nigga shoot fart at that, bro. <laughs> you know now, shot, dog. Joe, Di Joe ah. Diaz. And Brown, I'm gonna tell you, Silent Bob, this is how you're gonna gas the bitch. You know what I'm saying? We sleep like doctors. We can't sleep like that when there's women in the room, especially old fucking ladies. What is it? It's fucking grandma and his mom at the same time, cup sucker. So, fool, so as soon as she fucking speaks, fool, I fucking put, dude, I fucking adjusted my butthole, fool. Like, dude, it was like I was adjusting my sights, fool. And the mama, <laughs> fool, it's like smoking weed from Mexico, dog, and you're fucking popping all the seeds in the joint, fool. <laughs> it was like, I even described someone's mom. It was ferocious, bro. Fool, and then I'm sure the fucking smell with all the fucking, I mean, there's an old test in my stomach. His shoes stink? <laughs> oh, dude, this little motherfucker. Fool, brand, brand new a, shoes. A fool that weighs 90 pounds, take off and his brand shoes. brand new shoes. And it smells like a fucking dumpster, fool. It's like, damn, dude, what's going on with the youth of today? The fool. Youth. Well, I thought he took a play, bro. He fucking took a skateboard. I went to all the way to Tempe. <laughs> I was going to say, youth, the nigga's 30, dog. Come on, fool. So anyways, so I'm all, and then she was all, and, and there was a pause, fool, in the conversation, right? <laughs> and like a pause, like, I don't know whether to throw up or run out of the door. 
So, fool, that was just round one, dog. Fool, I buckled down for some fucking pulpo fucking carnitas or chicharrones. Doosh, doosh. Doosh. Brr. <laughs> fool, I gassed them like Auschwitz, fool. No survivors, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So, that's what happened, fool. And then she goes, okay, I'll see you later. Bye. And so <laughs> he walks out, and you can tell him he's in the hallway, like doesn't know what to do. It's like, and, and, and I asked her, "How come you go to her house? She lives forty miles away." That's twenty Uber minutes. Dog. That's what I'm saying. What the fuck? There are so many places to have sex around the building, bro. I don't get it. Take her under the orange, the swimming pool, bro. Right. Nobody's there. Fuck no. And my whole thing is like, dude, if I'm sharing a room with somebody, dude, I mean, you, you know. If you bring somebody in the room to have sex and it's not your house, you know a fool's going to be peeking. You know a fool's yeah. going to be... I don't give a shit. I don't care. Rubbing her feet. But <laughs> just popping the Specking toes. Specking your ass. But, uh, yeah, come on, dog. You gotta, you, I mean, a chick's not going to want that unless she's a freak, you know? I know. He, he, he catfished her, bro. <laughs> he catfished her. He, he told her he had a room. Oh, yeah, dude. He can't he take that. He could have went to Chris Doran's condo. Yeah, he's all. He yeah, told, bro. He could have stayed in the living room, bro. He told him in the morning, bro, and I would have switched rooms with you, bro. You can do whatever you want, bro. You got tough times with old ladies, bro. <laughs> that was that old lady's fault, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how can an old lady be 50 and be unprepared, fool? I know. First of all, if you're 50, I'm not even going to talk to you. <laughs> 50, bro. What, do you want a hug? What are you going to teach me the ABCs? Uh, she's gonna teach me the timetable. Uh, the square root of 47. <laughs> she's gonna put me in bed. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Give me a little sing lullabies, dog. What's so fool? Not, not to talk about the weather, but it was 107. Oh there. my God, Sunday was hot, huh, fool? It was hot. We didn't do nothing but stay in the hotel. We went to the mall a little bit and came back. That's why we went to the Arizona Mills Mall, man. That motherfucker was sweaty. It was even warm. Everybody was sucking the cold air out of there with their hot ass bodies, dude. It was like 107 outside, and there was like around, I don't know, a lot of people at the mall. Packed. And, and it was it was moist in there. It was <laughs> humid, fool. Humid, man. Yeah, it was uh, what, the Arizona Mills Mall. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, it was cool, though. You fucking got a little bit of gear, right? Got me some pants from Perry Alice. What's up, fool? Shout outs. Upcoming shows, Go for it. May 25th through the 28th, I'll be at the Irvine Improv. That's today, today, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay, check this out. Friday's second show is sold out. All right? Tonight sh tonight's show is sold out, okay? Tonight's show is sold out. Saturday's show is sold out. There's still some tickets left for Sunday, but hurry up because we added a second show on Sunday at 930. So all these shows are sold out at the Irvine Improv, so... I would say um, I'll see you guys next time. June 1st through the 4th, Arlington, Texas at the Arlington Improv. Plenty of tickets available. Next week, we're coming. See you there, fool. July 1st, Tucson, Arizona at the Ava Amphitheater with Paul Rodriguez. Hola. Hey. We'll be doing comedy before the concert with Tierra, Malo, and Ward. In July I'm also coming to Corpus Christi, Texas, Tampa, Florida, and Des Moines, Iowa. Des Moines, Iowa. Tell everybody. Check out felipesworld.com slash tour for other shows, dates, and the rest of the year. Okay, we have a special, special shout-out from a veteran, a guy who served time in the military. And um, he wrote us a nice tweet. Check this out. We're going to read it. Uh, shout out to at XO Mateo on Twitter. XO Mateo. Follow him. Tell him thank you for providing and protecting us from terrorism all over the world. At X O M A T T E O. X O M A T T E O. Tell him thanks. What's up, fool? Hey, I'm blind. Hey, I'm blind. And I just got out the military after 10 years. Military intelligence unit. I'm Mexican, but I look white. I'm a Miklo. I just want to say thank you. And Rodrigo, you guys helped me when I got in my accident. I just put your podcast on and just had... And I just put your podcast on and just had been blind for three months. I want to say thank you. You helped me and entertained me throughout my whole problem. All my family is gang-related. 
norteños used to be now now what's up now they got out but chilling with you guys i felt like i was at a pachanga party just talking shit about life it's cool man <laughs> i'm starting a podcast with a guy who delivered my weed he's from el salvador he worked the door at Cobbs, we're going to sign a peace treaty, man. Wouldn't that be cool? And violence. I lost all my friends in Salinas due to prison or death. I'm trying to find new friends now. I just want to say I live near Cobbs in San Francisco. If you ever need a place to chill in San Francisco, you got one. All right, fool. Thank you very <clears throat> very much at my XO Mateo, bro. Hell yeah. Intelligent, bro. He got blind in the military. Looking forward to it, though. And now we have full fucking, um, gonna start a podcast, bro. That's what's up, man. That's it's fucking cool. It's gonna be I see a Cerote podcast. <laughs> right, don't see one. <laughs> That'd be a good name, I see a Cerote podcast. There he is. Everyone who reviewed on the night tunes, Chancla Van Dam in the IE. <laughs> That's what's up, Chancla, what's happening? Chancla Van Dam in the up. IE. Commutes from Indio to Victorville five days a week and say the podcast keeps him from crashing like John Jones on a crack bender. Damn. Geo 662. Whoa, man. Before up, we even bro? move on, man. What check happened? this out. I am moving, man. Right, right. LA. I'm out of Glendale. I'm going back to the LA County. That's what's up, fool. Let me fix my headphones right here. Okay. So, as you guys know, man, Rodrigo weighs a waist 38. 38, yeah. 32? 38, 30s. 38, 30. Oh. And I wear a waist 42, 30 sometimes. Well, almost to the time, but lately. <laughs> I also have pants that are 40, 30. And I have a lot of shirts that are extra large. Because I have a long torso, man. <laughs> like I keep saying, I'm on torso. You're on torso, bro. Like most time I'm wearing, like, and like, like, I can't reach the gas pedal and my fucking head hits the top of the car. <laughs> I have shorter legs than I do a torso. Fucking stunt, man, Rafa. I'm on torso, bro. I'm like a full Nelson. <laughs> okay, put your ass like, in the I can help here. you carry the couch, but I got to be on the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> I can't be on top. You should put up a picture of that little dog, fool. I mean, one time I, I, one time I was walking around, some guy goes, man, hey, bro, you got some nice leather pants, bro. They're boots. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> like, I can't, it's funny, when I was in a car. And I couldn't reach. He goes, I, I was trying to move the seat forward, and I couldn't anymore. And he goes, that's it? You you don't feel tired because I'm all big, right? The, the, cab, the cab guy goes, you don't feel like stuff? No, nah, I'm all right. Look at my legs, bro. I couldn't even t reach the the front of the car. You're but I could reach the back, bro. I could fuck stuff. Like, if I had kids in the back seat, I could fuck them up, bro. This is my nostrils, dog. Anyways, dog. So oh. enough of a torso. All bunny, no hop. So <laughs> the, point the point is, man, <laughs> we're moving out. And I'm going to invite anybody that wants to come down to our old house, and we're going to have a fat man yard sale. Yeah, man. Fat man yard Plus sale. Some Plus some furniture for sale. A lot of merch, a lot of old merch we don't sell no more. A lot of old CDs. A lot of, you have a lot of shirts, concert t-shirts, right? I got a lot of stuff I got to get rid of, dude. Any really Deftone stuff? No, no Deftone stuff. Of course not. But you have a lot of other shirts, right? Yeah, a lot some, of some. Vintage. Rodrigo stuff, by the way, man, he's a neat guy, man. Like he don't, he don't like all my shirts, bro. They've been masturbated on and rewashed. I guarantee you, that's not a tie dye shirt, bro. Anyway, so give it to Honest John. Eh? Yeah, I didn't want Honest John wear those shirts. So we're all Rodrigo shirt around point, and um, we're gonna be selling a lot of fat man stuff, like I mean, thirty eight and up. Yeah, man. I'm, a lot of my tennis shoes will be out there, man. I might be selling my coat from the, the first special. Oh, shit. A lot of stuff will be there for sale. We have a guest here, man. His fucking khaki might be for sale. <laughs> if you guys like shants. <laughs> Get him a romper. A ro <laughs> Anyways, man. So, yes, man. We're going to have a big yard sale, man. In a couple of weeks. In a couple of weeks. A lot of, the, a lot of the What's Up Food podcast posters will be on sale, too. Hell yeah. At a discount, but they'll be on sale. Yeah. I love my CD. You have a CD? Negativo. Your shirts will be on sale. Yeah, I'll have them. But most of my t shirt will be like $2. Are you giving out an address for this? Not yet, well, not yet man. All We're right. still living there, man. 
I'm well, fucking showing up tomorrow, huh? I don't want people to show up. Hey, dale, man, just kill her, check out that stove, baby. <laughs> you want to smoke a bowl, dog? <laughs> I know, man. Everybody want to hit a bowl now, bro. You got McDonald's. Yeah, bro. you got to be careful, right? What's up, fool? What else we got? Well, we'll announce next week. Yeah, so next, we'll be in June, man. A lot of, we're going to have, um, like, if you're looking for clothes, you know, an iron is broken. <laughs> You want to stop by and say hi, man, you know? Lingers, dog. Linger, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out to Crow Magnum. Uh, uh, Dreadhawk. Dreadhawk. We gave him a shout out already. But he, brought a, he brought a merch, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one that made the meme about Flacco, the ambulance. Fl- <laughs> Flacco's limo, dog. That fool showed up. He gave me a, a shopping bag, you know, for, for Whole Foods. Uh-huh. He gave me a shirt, a hoodie. And the, the, the oh, that's Crow Man. Crow Man, yeah, yeah Crow yeah, Man gave him, me man. all that gear. Does he work at Whole Foods? Yeah, he worked. No, we, I met him at Whole Foods. Yeah, he's Crow Mag. He's a vegan. He's a um. He's he a, a cute triathlon. Little, he has a little Miklo son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a he's all triathlon. Over. Yeah, he's like a, a hardcore oh. athlete, dude. I used to be a triathlon, bro. I did heroin, coke, and PCP at the same time. <laughs> What's up, fool? All right, man. So. Anything you want to add, bro? Any shout-outs you forgot? Uh, no, just uh, the Riverside show is on for next week at Romano's, the concert lounge with uh, Armando Cosillo. He'll be in the house. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, fucking, I, I eat Chinese food with tortillas. Eh? Um, and thank you very much for everybody that came out to the Dia de los Puercos show in West Covina. We'll be having one again. We'll let you guys know. Before we start, man, anything else? Uh, other than that, that's it. Check out the Yeah Man podcast. Okay, this is my editorial of the my editorial of the, uh, 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 your column of the week. My column. This this is this is something that really upset me, man. This week. <laughs> I mean, it really upset me a lot. That I just cannot shake it off, bro. Let us know. I wanted to tell you in Tempe, but I don't want to lose my mind, bro. What happened? For what's bugging I, you? It has to do with Gabriel Iglesias, Fluffy. What happened? Bro? You know that you know that fool. He did a whole month, right? He couldn't do stand up comedy because right. of his sickness or. Whatever personal issues, right? right? Right, he was training. I he think. was training, mm-hmm. you know, and he was sick, and you know, he gave away, he, he gave up uh, probably I want half a million dollars worth of work, right? Right, right, right. Because he was sick, right? More probably, a lot more, yeah. probably a million, and um, he was sick, right? And he was, he did like a little bit of tours, not, not too much, you know, but he he's trying to he's trying to go out less and less, you know, with people, right? So this is what a man, I mean. This chick posted a photo. My brother wants to go to your show so bad. He's in the hospital now. Can you go see him? Don't you know that? Can you go see him? So obviously, like, he, he's too busy. He's on a tour bus. He doesn't have time to stop, make a U-turn, and go, get, go to see this guy, right? This chick had all her friends tag him all day. Are you serious? All day. Bugging the hell out of Bugging him. Bugging the hell out of him. Tagging him. Tagging him. Reposting it. Reposting it. Reposting it. Tagging it. Relentless. Fucking lingering ass bitch, bro. <laughs> I mean, her son, her brother gonna die. Right. And what There's a lot of sick people, bro. What can you do to save him anyway? I know, man. But you know, I heard that Gabriel sell that miracle water, though. <laughs> <laughs> from the Vatican or what? Dude? Yeah, yeah. Miracle yeah, Vatican water. water. Bro. <laughs> well, you drink that miracle water, bro, and a fucking, your fucking welfare chick shows up early. <laughs> <laughs> Get a double tax break here? Or what? Nah, bro. Jesus, but I just, man. it just irks me that that lady, like, she didn't go, she didn't, didn't she go back a month ago and find out that he's sick too? Oh, yeah. He don't have time to go over there and shake hands, man. He's going to have oh, to put his But if he didn't show up, if he did not show up, he's too Hollywood. What an asshole. Oh, what an asshole he is. What a piece of shit. Gabriel doesn't think about us anymore. He just thinks about his Volkswagens. You know what I mean? Yeah, it would just upset me, bro. Like, bitch, I get it. How what a it. fucking selfish ass bitch, dog. That's how it gets. Your brother's dude. sick. He's all right. Gabriel, Gabriel doesn't have the healing power to cure him. Yeah, he's, you, you, there's going to be other shows. He's not a physician, lady. Oh, man. The nerve. The nerve, bro. <laughs> I, you, know, you know what's going to happen next year, right? Uh, it's going to get Whether ridiculous. her brother dies, just say her brother dies. Right. He, he don't die. Oh man, this this is, this is the, the example that's gonna happen if her brother li- doesn't die, dies. Our brother's dead, Gabriel. You know we're sad. You know I thought maybe you could give us free tickets, bro, for our whole family, and we could get all reunited like we were at the hospital together the day we show up, and we could just take photos in honor of my dead brother. <laughs> that would have been the next letter. Now this is a letter if that bitch brother would not would have not died. 
oh, man, my brother's alive because you put a big smile on his face. But um, the hospital bills has been fucking us up, man. And we have no money to go to your show anymore because the tickets are like $35. I was thinking, man, if you could, like, maybe if there's any extra tickets, you know. Okay, and so she gets the extra tickets, bro. This is this is the next email after she gets the tickets. <laughs> oh, Gabriel, is there any way, man, that you could get us? Because we're in the back of the line right now, and we're trying to get in, and my brother's in a fucking wheelchair, and we're just trying to get into the show, man. Okay, hey, now they're in the show, right? <laughs> oh, Gabriel, we're in the show, man. We're way in the back seat, man. I thought maybe we could go backstage and meet you, man. My brother wants to thank you now, man, because of your of your miracle water. He can walk now, man. Hallelujah. They'll ask for a lot, huh? Oh, my God. Why don't you just make a part of his act and move into the house? That reminds me, bro, of that Bob and Tom show, Bob and Dave show. Yeah. When they go visit that little bird motherfucker with the little wristbands. <laughs> a little jerky piece of meat. <laughs> yes, yes. Because <laughs> uh, you know how hard it is to go visit a bird motherfucker, right? Dude. But just to put it, let's go with your life right now, with what's going on with you, fool. How many people try to get at your ass? Do they understand that, dude, each of those tickets, all right, say you give somebody a ticket, all right, it's a value of 25 bucks. You still got to pay the club that value that they sell to you for whatever it's valued at. It costs you money. If you yeah. give somebody a shirt, you paid for that shit. I mean, you're not going to get it for what you sell it for, but you paid to get that shirt I, I, made. I just, I the just, effort to get that shirt to your show. The nerve, bro. Don't you really understand? Like, where were you with the hospital? Did you go over there with the hospital? <laughs> oh, man. Nowhere, fool. But this was the, the kicker. There'll be a chocolate cake waiting for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't you know that motherfucker's diabetic, bitch? Yeah. Trying to kill, his trying to kill him. People give him cakes, right? Every I city. Every city. man. The nerve, man. I would have, like, I would have, man, I, I probably would have went too, but still, man, the nerve will keep asking. Well, that's why people yeah. get so reclusive, dude. You can't, you can't, and, and anyways, like, dude, Jesus Christ couldn't satisfy everybody. Let it you, you guys. That's what they fucking I think them, the bro. thing you said about, uh, he's sick. Like, yeah. like, you, you battled some stuff, right? You know yeah. I battled some stuff. Like, when it's fresh... You're on a razor's edge, and people got to respect that. Like, they don't respect that. Like, don't even that U-turn to go back might be just enough to push somebody back on the bad path, you know? Oh, dude, it's fucking amazing what these people want, dude. Pull over the... Your, I noticed on your tracking, my tracking device, Gabriel, that your bus is going to make a left turn around 10, 10, 59 p.m. Is there any possible way that me and my son can stop by there in that corner at that, at that fucking cross light, and you could just maybe jump off and just take a photo of them real quick. Like, my son will really appreciate it. You know, my son gets all A's at school, and you're his <laughs> favorite comedian. You. And, and I'll, I'll bring a cake. And I'll bring a cake. <laughs> Jesus, you man. You're not off at all. You're not off, huh? No, dude. And you're not off. Uh, you're always, high, and I don't understand how, how, how person, how people, how someone could be Hollywood, bro. Dude, you have well, to live your life too, dude. I'll tell you, yeah, I gotta tell you something. The Hollywood guy is right here next to us. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Right, you know me. Like when they mention Latino writers, his name pops up. It does. That's right. That's he right. Goes, we have Peter Murrieta. We have enough. We cover our Latino. We're safe. Hey, Take I want to tell you about you, Hollywood. I'll tell you about Hollywood. You want to hear about Hollywood? I want to. We right, got so Peter we... Murrieta right here, people. A writer for the Cristela show. A writer uh, for writer. the fucking Donut Show. Wizards Superior of Waverly Place. Wizards of Waverly Place. What's the Donut Show? Greek, the Donut Shop. Some donut Shop. Superior, Superior Donuts. donuts. The writer, Lopez creator of um, Lopez, a waver, of Wizards, Wizards of Waverly Place. The show that Fred Stoller was begging to be on every week. Yeah, um, please bring me back. So let me tell Marietta. you real quick about Hollywood. It's so funny you brought that up because Do tell. Uh, my kid, when he was younger, he played Little League. With Willie Barsena. Yeah. Uh -huh, this ain't a Willie story, though. But, <laughs> but, he has but, a bunch of them, bro. Oh, but, but. Give us one later. Let but, him beat him up, but bro. But we were up there, you know, and I was working. I think I was working on Wizards, you know, whatever. And um, my wife had an invitation she got from the temple we belong to because she's Jewish. And they were like, we're having a dinner to raise money to bring over this celebrity cantor. And I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Me either, but it sounds important. It does. It's very important. Yeah. So he sings in the temple, and he's from Israel, and we're bringing him over. And it's like $1,000 a plate to go to dinner to raise money, right? I'll wash him. And I say, I'm 
totally good with the guy we got now. I don't, I'm good. I don't need to spend that money. We don't have that kind of money. This one's from Bethlehem. Yeah, we're good. We're good. This one's from Bethlehem. We're good. We got the guy, the local guy. I like the local guy. So then a week later, I go up to the Little League, and uh, it's in Echo Park, and I love it there, and I love um, Sergio, who runs it, and we're having a parent meeting, and somebody says, hey, the, the microwave in the snack stand broke, and uh, we're going to have a car wash on Saturday after the games to raise money to get a new microwave. How much is that microwave? <laughs> About 300 bucks, you know, right? Comes from Israel. No, it's a big one, right? Oh, for the, oh, for the, the snack big stand. one. All yeah, right. okay. So I say, and I'm not trying to be Hollywood, I just say, well, that's like 300 bucks, right? And I'm like, they're like, yeah. And I'm like, I, I could just buy it for you. And then, it, oh, Mr. Hollywood doesn't want to get involved in the car wash. <laughs> Doesn't want to come out and wash cars with everybody. So I was like, no, 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 no. I just want to spend 300 bucks for your microwave and got totally Hollywooded. Like I'm a big asshole. And those, and those, and those pieces of shit don't realize, they rather fucking struggle, brother, instead of paying that shit <laughs> yeah, right there, bro. Fuck all that. Because they're, they're not in the car wash. In the car wash, they could squeeze the extra $100 out of it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to be able to skim off the top. You're going to give me $300, bro. That shit better go in the microwave. Yeah. But over there, they, they, don't, they don't know how much they got in the car wash. Yeah. How many donations they got, you know. <laughs> You gotta take some. Yeah. Th there's no there's no envelopes to be involved like that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Ma case That's closed. Right. That's, well, that's right. So anyway, yeah. Right there, dude. You're so all Hollywood. Bro. Um. So I also feel like from what I was listening to when I first came in here, I just need to say I don't even understand why, but I'm a 36, 32. 36, 30, Don't be lying, man. Really? I'm not. I'm a not. A loose 36? In shorts, right? No, no, right? it's a tight 36. <laughs> oh, really? Do you wear it like old man style with but the belly button? In, in elastic, No, right? it, goes, it goes underneath the gut. Oh, okay, wow. In elastic, right? Elastic <laughs> shorts? <laughs> yeah, Gosh, gosh shorts, well, what's shorts. going on here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I only go about 5'9", guys. It's still That's fat. Cool. It's still uh -huh. fat. A, a friend of ours, right? <laughs> he lost so much weight. Because he got really sick, but now he's doing well. We were trying to guess his weight, and I was thinking stuff and stuff. This fool was twenty nine thirty. <laughs> oh, I was like, that's high school. school. Yeah, uh -huh. that's high school. Twenty nine grade three, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I had to cuff my Levi's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got Peter here, bro. Not only yeah. that, Peter was the shot caller, bro, in my development deal, bro. Hell yeah, hey, yeah. Yeah, man. That was fun. A whole year working out. Yeah, yeah, working hard for a whole hard, year, man. And maybe my favorite thing that I've worked on. It was really. fun, huh? It was really fun, and I love the script we got out of it. And we'll see what happens next, you know? Because we're going to try to shoot it again next time, right? Yeah, with Fox? yeah, yeah, with Fox. So they like right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fun, man. I've never, I never, I never been involved with anything like that. It was good. Just meeting every day. My and... favorite story about that, um, and you got to tell it from your point of view, but we went into ABC. We've been working for eight months. We're yeah. ready to pitch. You know the story I'm going to tell about no. Dave Miner? So we walk in the door. We all get situated downstairs. Uh, we get upstairs. I got to go to the John. I leave. My manager's there. And with all the goodness in your heart, you lean over to Dave and you say, hey, we should maybe mention when we get in the room that Peter's Mexican so they'll know because, you know, yeah. he doesn't look like it. And my manager goes, no, 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 no. They know him. He's exactly the right amount of Mexican for them. <laughs> We need to make sure they know that you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's Hollywood, dog. That's Hollywood, right? And how'd you guys meet? Well, how did that happen? We met, I think we met, and I don't know if you remember this, so but Genesis. we met years ago when I went over to Lucy Zeladobe because um, Freddie Soto and Willie and Al Madrigal and I had a sketch show that we had sold to Sony, and then Freddie died. And they were still trying to put it together, and they were like, you gotta go meet Gabriel, because maybe he'll do it. And we went over to Lucy's, and Gabriel was there with you, and Noe, and a couple of other guys. Oh, uh, Lucy's car, Lucy's, um... No, the Mexican food on Mel Melrose. Oh, yeah. And we sat and talked with you for about an hour, um, and that's when I first met you. I don't remember, man. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy's where? It's on Melrose by Paramount, right across the street. But that's when I first met you. Then, then you know, went years and years and years, and then uh, met you again last year. 
Because you were, you were working with Dustin Ibarra. How did you connect with him? Dustin and I met because of Hollywood, our agents. Our agents yeah. were like, oh, he wants to do something. You're, You're doing something. Put them together. Yeah, put them together. We're both at the same agency. We both like each other. And I went and met him at um, somewhere on Sunset to see if we would get along. Um, We'll get to that but um, with, with our story. But yeah. you were like, they were connect you with someone. You just say, man, I, I got nothing with this guy. Yeah. I can't click. There's nothing yeah. here. Yeah. Worst one. How, how, how does that happen? How, um, how, how, like, how, how do you not connect? How, no, how do you like, because I, I thought like you guys were... Writers are born to just go with the flow and fight. Yeah, something. yeah, you try, you try, you try. But yeah. you just don't click. How well, like there's a guy, like I, 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 like there was a guy that they wanted me to meet, and I met, and like, um, I got a call before the meeting, and they were like, "Oh, his manager wants to to be a part of this," and I was like, "Uh, that's cool, but this is a first date. Like, let's just see if if we vibe and whatever first, you know. I, I don't really want to jump in all the way on that." And then they were like, no, 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 that's cool. We get it. We get it. We get it. And then I sat down to meet with this guy. And like, I don't know, 10 minutes into it, it was at a diner. 10 minutes into it. 10 minutes into it. Worst acting I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> from <laughs> another friend. booth. From another booth, the manager gets up and goes, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a, what a crazy coincidence. I can't wow. believe it. I, I really, I <clears throat> swear to God, I had no idea you guys were meeting here. Oh my God. And then he sits down and becomes part of the meeting. And like, so I'm in the middle of this. It's like being on a bad first date where you're like, I want to leave now, but I can't. So I have to pretend to go along with it for another 45 minutes and then bail. Sounds like a Christopher Guest movie. <laughs> <laughs> and Eugene it, Levy should look It kind of does. It kind of does. Or, hey! like, or like that old movie with Kevin Bacon where like the manager. The producers? Yeah, the yeah. Martin Short is like, hey, I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> Call me like that. Oh shit. my god! Damn, yeah. dude. That's some Ernie G shit, huh? <laughs> it's like an episode of Hollywood Squares. Right, 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 right. So anyway, I don't know. <laughs> hey, 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 your chocolate and my peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, what about that? So there's that. Fuck, you know? man. God damn. Yeah. That's a Hollywood. Eh? Yeah. Kill me was a bad acting. Oh my god. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Oh my god. I can't believe this. We gotta do that one day. <laughs> okay, yeah. Take this dude. How about anybody that keeps saying over and over again? I swear to God, I had no idea. And you're like, well. I think you had totally an idea. <laughs> Got the suspect. Yeah. Wow, man. Um, so you do, but you do try to go with the flow. You try to meet people and try to see if you can help them. So he was working with Dustin Ibarra, and I was working with Bobby, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. And then you know Bobby, right? I know. Bobby's my neighbor. He's your neighbor. Yeah. Did you guys start talking? Yeah, we just were walking down the street. Uh, I was going to get coffee. Bobby and he was on his Bowman, bike, bro. And he, uh, he, we were talking about what are you doing? Well, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm doing this thing with Dustin. I'm doing this thing with Felipe. I go, I know Felipe. He has long hair. And uh, <laughs> and and then we started talking about what we were trying to do. And we're like, well, obviously at some point we're both going to be pitching a show, competing with each other. Why don't we figure out if if these guys get along? Maybe we could do something together. And then. And here's what we could probably spend all day talking about. Then we had to do, because Bobby's a smart guy and a good guy, and I'm a good guy, I think, and try to be a smart guy. We're like, well, first, we have to find out if Felipe and Dustin have beef. Because I don't want to start something and find out there's trouble, right? Because you want you want to do that. And so we checked in and, you know, like, no, oh, I think he's great, great. And so then we met up. To, to talk, but like there's so much beef everywhere when you get involved. Have you and, ever had any experiences of that where you didn't know beforehand and then you got together and there was internal clashes or stuff like that that happened? Uh huh. There was beef? Who, man? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the well, beef? Well, you know, a long time ago, you know, I tried to help out Willie with something and he had shot something uh, on his own and I had tried to um, come in and give him notes after the fact with him and his man. Was that that, um, that show that Willie was working with Jay Leno? Oh no, that's even before that. When he, when he was working oh, with Jay wow. Leno, oh, you talking about that I, movie? Uh, he shot a small movie about him being a dad, like on his own. Yeah. And and um, uh, is that the real dark one where he's doing coke? Uh uh-uh. uh Oh man, well, that's the one after Jay Leno. That's the one after. Dark so the Jay Leno one, the Jay Leno one, actually is the way I met Willie. Was somebody wrote that script? This was when I first got to town. First got to Hollywood. Someone wrote that script. I don't remember his name. His name was the, the guy from Seinfeld. I don't know his name. Kurt Long hair. Don't know. Uh, he he has, he's long. He has long hair, and he wrote he wrote an episode. He did one. Uh, Larry one. Larry Charles maybe. Larry Charles. Okay. Oh wow. So yeah. he wrote the first script, and then for whatever reason, he like wrote it with up with Willie Willie one time. Okay. So 
it, for whatever reason, it didn't go forward. And then I was new to town, and my agent sent me to meet somebody over at NBC, an exec. And then we, after the meeting was over, because I think I talked about when I was a kid, I used to, my, my grandfather was a, a mechanic at a car dealership. Okay. And I said, oh, we have this show about a guy who works at a car dealership that Jay's doing with this guy, Willie Barsena, and it needs somebody to come in and do a rewrite. And so I got, that was like one of my first jobs was meeting with Jay and working with Jay on this rewrite for Willie. Cool. And it was super cool. Jay was super cool. Like, and it's so funny because right when I started meeting with him was sort of after the Letterman thing and people were picking sides and everything. And, and, and I was like, well, I don't know. When I go meet him, he's incredibly nice and he's incredibly funny and really smart. Like, I don't have anything bad to say about him. And uh, it was a great experience. But then towards the end of it, and I don't know what happened, the network was like, Willie's out, not doing it. I don't know if he pissed anybody off or what happened, but like, it's not going on. So it was one of those situations where I finished the rewrite and turned it in just to get my check, and, but I knew it was not happening. But then later, he, he shot something on his own with some managers. It wasn't the one we was doing coke, but it was something about a dad, and he used the baseball field we all worked on, and, and I went in to give him notes on it, and you know, I guess he kind of had beef with me and I didn't know about it and I kind of walked into it and it was like a lot of stuff that I didn't have any idea about and I felt bad about and I got the hell out. You know, I'm like, I'm not, I don't, I'm volunteering my time. So didn't feel right. I'm not going to jump into someone who wants to be critical of me as a person. I'm good. (laughs) After that, what you do, how'd you, how'd you get started with wizards? Um, Wizards was a um, thing where I was created, right? Uh, I did not actually on the title card create well, it. Telling everybody you created. That's fine. <laughs> You're the show. I was a showrunner. Yeah. I was a showrunner. What's um, a showrunner for people who don't know? Uh, it's somebody who's the head writer and also producer, the head director, producer everything, huh? and and make sure that the director you get you want he's kind of in charge of the show in charge of delivering the show. Everything goes through you. Everything you get goes all the bad you. calls like yeah. Yeah. change the actor. Yeah, all of it. All you got to deliver sad news or sad someone else does it for you. Good news? No, I do it. Ooh. Tough, 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 tough. So you must get a lot of people going to your office. Yes. So you could, so you literally could do what Steve Harvey did. Huh? So I could approach me. I could. I used to have my assistant. Was one of my one of my assistant's jobs was when I was leaving my office to go to the set or to my car or to editing. One of his jobs was to walk with me, with like a clipboard or some papers or whatever, and act like we were talking about something super important. <laughs> because I was like, I just, I don't need to be bothered right now. I need to get where I'm going. So I did the subtle version of the Steve Harvey thing. Like, I didn't make an announcement. I was just like, I'm going to be super busy when I leave here so nobody can kind of grab hold of me. Um, but, but I came back from New York. I was doing a show, and Disney handed me a script called The Amazing O'Malley's. And it was um, about an Irish family that owned a magic shop and had powers. And I read it, and they asked if I wanted to get involved in it. And I was like, well, sure, but there's some things I'd like to change. And I think because I'm half and half, it'd be cool to make the family half and half and find some Latino actors and stuff like that and maybe move it out of a magic shop and have it be a more fun environment or whatever. And so they let me do that, and uh, and that's how we started that show. So that was awesome, my job. Dude. And you made a Latino. Yeah. That's, funny. that's the second time they made a show Latino because Dora the Explorer was, like, was about to be a little Irish girl. Oh, yeah? Without being Latino. She was, yeah, we were really Latino. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and uh, it who was, was, the, f- was the, fun. Yeah, go ahead. Who was the, the lead? Uh, Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. And uh, and uh, Maria Canals Barrera. She was on the mom. Cristela's show, right? She was on Cristela. She played Cristela's sister. And um, David DeLuise, Dom DeLuise's son, oh, for wow. anybody that remembers Hollywood Squares. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, yeah, it was fun. It was a great time. Four four years. I did three years, and then Disney fired me, and uh, I didn't do the last year. How come they fired you? Uh, I think I was difficult. I wanted things my way, and I think they um, grew tired of that, to be fair. But <laughs> I was making a great show, and we won three Emmys, so I thought I thought we were cool. That's bitching, though. I thought we were cool, but it turns out we weren't, so I didn't do the last year. What'd you work on after that? Uh, I did a show for Cartoon Network, but it was live action called Level Up. It was about a bunch of kids who had some monsters come out of a video game 
in their town and they had to like really fight monsters and put them back in the video game. So it's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons or like World of Warcraft come to life. Did Ray Romano's mom come on in that one? Uh, like a couple of episodes? No. I saw her in a movie when she was playing computer, but not grandma. No, no, no. no. You know who was in that was Amy Carrero, who does a lot now. She's the voice of um, Elena, the, the first Latina Disney princess. Oh, wow. And uh, the guy, Jesse Usher, who's on a show that LeBron James uh, produces now. And um, um, Eric Andre was in the pilot. Oh, yeah? Of it, yeah. And then he was like, I'm going to do a crazy thing where I take off my clothes instead of this kid's show. So he bailed. Uh, and uh, and so I did that, and then I <clears throat> wanted to get into more back what I started, which was a more adult prime time stuff. And so then I went to Cristela, and then I did Lopez, and I did um, One Day at a Time, and now Superior Donuts. You're working on Lopez, the show now, or Lopez, the original show? No, the the show that he's doing now. But you were not always Hollywood, huh? You were a Tucson guy. Tucson guy, yeah. Party on the more, huh? Yeah, a little bit. So um, you've been sober how long? Oh gosh, twenty six years. Twenty six years. So, you, so you started uh, working in Hollywood as a writer when you sobered up. Oh yeah, I wasn't. I came out here sober and married. What you doing in Tucson? Gang banging? All of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, not gang banging. No, uh, but I did whatever you had, man. Whatever you had, I do. That's me right there, man. Yeah. Binges. Oh yeah. So you could stop oh, yeah. and live anybody a normal life. A party, huh? Anybody is a party. Anybody is a party. Says, uh, hey, we found these pills. We don't know what they are. <laughs> Who who would who would oh okay give him a Peter yeah he'll do it the pumpkin eater Talk bro. Yeah. Pete yeah 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 I remember being on a roof of a house during a party and thinking if I tuck properly I could jump off this roof from somersault and come up standing I remember doing shit like that and you know didn't work out so great no bones broken but I remember landing and thinking I'm just gonna lay here a while I'm just gonna lay here a while. And were you working there, like as a writer? Like what uh, I was in college. Hollywood? I was in college, and I was trying to get a degree that I didn't. And uh, I was doing sketch comedy, and worked at a little theater downtown, and did some plays and stuff. But nothing, you know, uh, that didn't start till Chicago. I moved to Chicago in '89. Oh wow! I saw Second City come to Tucson, and I was like, oh, I want to do that. So I moved to Chicago. So you joined Second City? Yeah, yeah, I loved it. So for how long were you there for? Five years. Five years Five sober. Years. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Couple slips, but yeah, working hard there. What made you sober up? I was asleep in the in a in a a construction site of an office building that was um, just framed, but it wasn't built out, and I was sleeping on a pallet of drywall because um, I was on the run, and I didn't want people to come to my house because they were gonna steal my shit. And I thought, this is not probably a long-term plan. But that was sort of my bottom right there. I was like, okay, that's, we can be done with that. That's probably time to start figuring something else out. And uh, so that's when it started. So, but you were crazy in high school, like beer runs? Uh, I think I started it in high school, but I was trying to still keep my shit tight. Like I was trying to get good grades, but not studying much and. <laughs> trying to kind of ease on by, but doing a little bit of work and maintaining. Yeah, I was maintaining. I was like uh, a lot of you know Peter's not living up to his potential from teachers and shit like that. And then it kind of really went nuts in <laughs> college and needed to be corralled. Right I actually get that from a teacher. Felipe's not living up to his potential. Yeah, that's a gets a good one. I, I didn't know what potential, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and now that I got kids, you. now that I got kids, when you hear that. I know what it means now, because I'm like, okay, I'm going to talk to him when I get home. Did you play baseball in high school? Uh, I did, yeah. Not very good, though. My I son's good. Yeah? But I wasn't very good. Did you play? Yeah, I, did. I played not in, not in the high school team. I was in the swimming team. <laughs> oh, yeah? But I played Little League, and I played um, semi-pro with, like, Saturday League and Tuesday Leagues uh -huh. and night playing. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't that great, but I just, like, playing, man. That's fun, isn't it? I like having two uniforms that I could get used to. I had a Saturday <laughs> league where I play with older men, and I have my league on Tuesday with high school, with um with um baseball high school dropouts. Oh, <laughs> nice! Yeah, so our young our league was um seventeen to nineteen with the Tuesdays, and the other league was seventeen to whatever age you were in. So it was a lot of older guys. So a lot of older guys from Pico Rivera who were really good. Really good. Uh, re they, those guys. This is hardball or softball? Hardball. Hardball. The um if you, I I don't know the names, but one of the guys who was a coach at my oldest's Little League. 
used to play semi-pro. So he would come to coach sometimes in his uni because he was playing Sunday League or Saturday League. And they would go down to Mexico once a year and play uh, a team from the town that they were all from. And he came back from one of these trips, like freaked out. And he told me that while they were there, one of the guys on his team got kidnapped. And uh, because I guess they found out that this guy owned like a tile company up in the valley and was doing okay. And so he got kidnapped and they wanted a ransom. And this shit got worse from there. Like he was, so he's kidnapped and he would a ransom. And in the process of getting the ransom together, it comes out that he's got two families. He's got a family up here and he's got a family down there. So now people are pissed. And so um, I guess they cut off his finger to prove they had him. They got the ransom, and then he got dropped off in San Diego and went to the hospital, two divorces, losing his business, and he doesn't have a finger. That's a fucked up weekend. One thumb up. (laughs) (laughs) That's a fucked up weekend, right? That is not. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. I guess so, but that is not a baseball trip you want to take, man. (laughs) So he stopped playing baseball? I guess he had to, right? Can't throw my knuckler no more. (laughs) He's a bat boy now. Damn, man, that's a good story though. How they find out he was, he had two families? I guess I guess they put out like yeah, a notice, pa. like to like, does anybody know anybody Went through that would have kidnapped shit. him and whatever? Yeah, and through the process of the investigation, I guess like his wife called and his other wife called the hospital or something, and uh, it was all bad, all bad. They got that play. Up. One of the families sent those people, huh? And what they do is they scout. They they do all that. That's what I'm saying. They scout. They, they see were like, who's making money. And if you're connected, they don't mess with you. If you're not connected and you're vulnerable, they'll get your ass. And if you don't act right. You see any thugs and in, in, um, you see any crazy looking motherfuckers in Mexico City? You do, but in Mexico City, like every block, there's a cop. They'll whoop your ass. Yeah, huh? it's like they don't mess around too much. But what is like, if you're like a high roller, a lot of them have bodyguards now because really? all the kidnappings are starting to surge again. But that's for people that got money. But and also in those communities, like say for instance, the gate guy, he'll start giving info. Those guys, you know, everybody oh. pay to play. You know, but it's all it's it's a lot a lot to deal with, and you have to know the game down there. That's oh, all man. it is. You know, it opens up new money versus old money, all yeah. types of shit. You know, it's, it's all different. scary to me. Yeah, I mean, if you if you're used to it or not, it is. But you know, it's I feel all like about hearsay, when too. I was younger, before I had gray hair, oh, everywhere, and I lived in Chicago, I would go to any neighborhood I wanted. And I, I don't feel like I'm tough, but I feel like I kind of keep my head down. I know right. shit where I grew up. Like, I can kind of just be straight and narrow. And I remember my mom visiting, and, like, uh, uh, we were on the elevated train, and I went over to make a phone call, and she was, like, alone. And I saw some guys starting to come around her, you know. And I always remember that now that I'm older, because I'm out and about by myself, and I think, how, when am I going to be the old fucker at what point am I old enough that there's they're gonna go? There's an older guy. Snatch you up. Let's so fucking get him. Not yet, but I'm worried. Am I in trouble? I'm, people are. Am I in trouble? Okay. That's no. when you know when you're old enough, huh? Well, when no. you know you're old when when that little fortune is gonna rob the old motherfucker. And that's yeah, that's what I want to know. What time is it? Will you, you tell know? me when I get there, There's Felipe? Will you let me know? Take his wallet. Shit, but that time, bro, I'm over here carrying one of those old little leather leather little bag with a little metal on it. What they call it? <laughs> the, a black jack, a, black a jack? Billy Jack, bro. <laughs> you gonna have that? Uh, hell yeah, man. Little dude, come, come here. What are you saying, Sonny? Bam. Sonny. Yeah. Sonny, you gonna call him Sonny? Hey, come here, Sonny. What are you saying over here? <laughs> and whack him in the forehead, right on the nose, bro. Break his nose. And I don't think you could ever be too prepared because when it happens, you ain't gonna know what to do. No. That's the thing. It's gonna it happen in a big city, bro. Yeah. yeah. And no matter how big you are, you all fall. Yeah. 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 yeah it's least expected shit. But I just I'm counting on you to tell me when I've turned. It's going to be up to you. It's a lot on you. You can't lift your neck. (laughs) (laughs) Pay your help. When you can't look at your celly in the eye, it's over. (laughs) It's all the way from the belly of the beast. But the other thing, too, with all these cameras and shit that's going on, crime still happens. I know, right? Do you know what somebody stole in my neighborhood yesterday? Somebody stole, somebody got that. pilot. The ring. The ring, the doorbell thing. You know the, 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 you know what I'm talking about? It's called the ring, right? Yeah. Where they, the camera and the, yeah. the doorbell. Yeah. Okay, the minute those came out, the minute those came out, I thought, well, if I'm a 
dude, I'm going to know what that looks like. And if I'm going to steal shit from your porch, I'm going to take that too. Right? Right. So, so sure enough. Sure got to think that way, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so sure enough, yesterday, somebody said a whole thing about your neighborhood. Like, someone stole my ring and, I, and my packages. And I'm like, yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense. And on top of that, you see all those Facebook videos and everything. It's like you have the ring <clears throat> and you're still getting jacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you know. That's why I have the nest. <laughs> the nest. I've upped it. <laughs> <laughs> Technology. Yeah. That's what, man. If you don't want to get jacked, bro, you got to order the Dollar Shave Club, bro. It comes <laughs> secured, bro. Nobody sees it. Delivered to your it door. comes hidden, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, fool? Today's episode is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. Today's episode. Wow. Dollar Shave Club, bro. Jigo uses Dollar Shave Club, man. Yeah, look at that there. face. Look at that face. Smooth like a baby. Smooth, man. When you slap him, man, you don't you don't feel no bristles. <laughs> you feel a smooth <laughs> face. Your hand slides off. Dollar Shave Club. Looks still smooth sponsoring over here. the What's Up Food Podcast. Well, Jigo has been using it all month and loved it. Yeah, We've had some listeners who subscribe to Dollar Shave Club already and love it. Get your face smooth and ready for summer by joining Dollar Shave Club is the smartest choice in my line. Yeah, man. A great shave at a great price. Conveniently delivered right to your door. Don't have to go to the store to get more razors. No more cheap shaves. Like Peter right here, he threw out shave with an old school one, but you got to chop it with a leather. Yeah. <laughs> Comes yep. with the awesome Dr. Carver Shaver Butter, which helps prevent ingrown hairs and fight razor bumps. You too can make the smart choice. By joining Dollar Shave Club. You still use it for real, though? Yeah, dude. Well, that's the key for me is the Dr. Uh, Carver's uh, uh, Shave Butter, dude. That's what gets it really like nice and smooth. How about just different. send me the butter? <laughs> he has secret ingredients. As one of our listeners for a limited time, new members get their first months of the executive razor oh. with a tube of their Dr. Carver Shave Butter for only $5. Five bucks. There you go. Free shipping. After that month, the razors are just a few bucks a month. That's a $15 value for only 5 bucks. Your first box will arrive, and you'll get an awesome heavy handle razor, a focus set of four cartridges, and a tube of their shave butter. And not only that, man, shit, if you have a razor bump and you're crying, Gabriel Glesson will show up and say hello to you. <laughs> if you give him a cake. Just tell him you have a cake and not to go Hollywood, you selfish bastards. <laughs> But you know a man, sometimes a man doesn't have time to go visit you. Sometimes yeah. a person has other issues, bro. Like he has to get get to Long Beach on time, man. Yeah, his life. And it's funny, man. Like I'm pretty sure they're not asking Adam Sandler to show up, bro. I'm sure he does, but they can't get a hold of him. It's I think you're right about that. Do, 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 do. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think those guys remove themselves from the day-to-day. -day. You can't, and especially now with social media, you're so accessible, you know what I mean? Yeah. People know where that tour bus is. Yeah. <laughs> no hidden fees, no commitments. Cancel anytime you want to get this deal. Join doll, join today at dollarshaveclub.com slash foo. Don't forget, dollarshaveclub.com slash foo. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash foo. Foo! What do you shave with, bro? Still with the old Bix? Uh-uh. <laughs> I wish. A straight razor. I wish. I, I, I had to use one last week, though. An old Bic. An old We're white Bic with the orange. The yellow tip. Yep. I, I, one blade I, I, I shave with an up. old safety razor that you got to put the razor in and a brush and a mug. Oh, that's an old school. Old, style, right? old I did that school. one time. Not old school, here. right? That's what I use. And then I fly back east all of April. I was flying back east to see my boy play baseball. And so I didn't want to check any luggage, you know, carry any shit with me. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm not taking any of that shit because I don't want to be inspected. Yeah. So um, I got back there and I went to the store and I couldn't find anything. And I ended up buying Big Shavers. 99 cents for five. Did it cut you up or all right? Terribly. It oh, cut me God. everywhere. Cut yeah. me everywhere. It's I did terrible. it once, man. So, you, so you, um, your son playing baseball? What, what, what college? Kenyon. Kenyon College in Kenyon Ohio. College? Yeah. You got a scholarship? Uh, yeah, you got a little bit. So you're still used to play um, baseball with Willie Barcena's guy? Yeah, Scott? Willie used to be his coach. Really? Yeah. Coach B. Coach B. Coach dog. Willie, dude. <laughs> Come on, bro. Challenge yourself. <laughs> on, give us a Willie against coach, bro. Hey, bro, I'm going to tell you something. I never played pro ball, bro, but I wanted to, bro. <laughs> Here's what you gotta do, bro. All right, bro. Shit. You guys know Fernando Valenzuela? Me neither, bro. Oh. <laughs> Tell you right now, bro. TJ wasn't built today. Just looks that way, bro. Oh. So get out there and swing, 
bro, before I swing at you, bro. <laughs> Forget what your dad told you, bro, your little league coach, bro. Anyways, bro, have a good game, bro. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> just in the <laughs> fake. Was, I know, just in the fake hat. Was that was great. a good one, bro. Yeah, that you was you great. got it, dog. Challenge good, yourself, A bro. good object work. Dude, yeah. we ain't fighting with another coach, bro. Hey, bro, I ain't playing, bro. All right, bro, this is baseball, bro. Have you heard of jujitsu, bro? <laughs> All right, bro. <laughs> Gina, get my gi. <laughs> <laughs> Gino! <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna kill him, bro. Why is he saying that, bro? When's the last time you guys saw him? Oh, I see Willie about three and a half years ago. That fool looked over the eye. Shit. <laughs> yeah, man. He's still out there doing it, right? He's still, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. He's, he's just he's online yesterday. He's done. Um, he's done. Um, he, he does a lot. Of, he, he writes a lot. Yeah, yeah. He makes a special like every other year. Yeah. What about Noe? Noe Gonzalez. What I don't know, bro. I haven't, last time I heard about him, bro, was like <laughs> five years ago, bro. Gabriel <laughs> cut him loose, bro. Now he's in the abyss somewhere in West Covina, bro. Oh, my God. He you used, know, to, he used to take classes for my wife. Really? Yeah. Wait, what? Before, before What's your he wife was teach? with Gabriel. She's Growth. improv, improv, improv. Is that teacher. when he used to open for Mencia? Or those, those, that era? It was before he had done anything. Really? He was a kid working in his parents' restaurant right, right, in West right, right. Covina. Long he hair? Would, he would drive into Run Hollywood. <laughs> And he would take acting and improv with her. Oh, okay, right. On. And I remember when he did his first open mic, and she went and supported him and stuff. And then I told her she was, he was with Felipe, and then you know, I haven't heard anything since. Yeah, I haven't heard about Noe in a, in a minute. It's been a while. So I, what happened, bro? Why Cristela show get canceled? Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 I don't know. How'd you become a part of it? What happened? How, how oh, happened? I just went and met. Like I had. You didn't write for the show. I did write for the show. Yeah, but 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 like when they did the pilot, like we did last yeah. year. That was with Christella and my boss, other boss, Kevin Hench. And then when the show got picked up, they met white writers to fill out the room. And I was just one of the writers that met them and they hired. So I worked um, for them. And, uh, you know, we did 22. We got our back nine. And it felt like we were pretty close to a pickup. And uh, shit just went south. You know, they just decided not to do it. What was missing, do you think? Uh, Jokes. <laughs> oh, in your no, humble no. professional opinion. In my humble professional opinion, I don't think the show was promoted as much as it should have been. But also, it was not a it was a Fox show, huh? Um, that show so they didn't really commit, right? Yeah, and I think it was like I, I think it was more about like ABC feeling like they could do better. I think one of the things that always happens at that time of year is they got their new shit coming in and they're weighing it out. And our ratings weren't great; they were okay. And I think when they look at that, they go, well, we got this. We know what it is. And we got this other thing that's shiny and new. And we wonder what the hell it is. And that year it was Dr. Ken. Dr. Ken and, and, and um, uh, Fresh Off the Boat. You know, yeah, Black yeah. Blackish. But Dr. Ken was the thing that's replaced us. And I think probably if I was being professional about it, regardless of the quality factor, which is not mine to say, like professionally, and I don't know if people even care, but I think – ABC was like, well, Cristela wasn't as known as the guy from The Hangover. Yeah, that's true. We had a trouble promoting that show. So maybe if we do a show in its place with somebody who everybody already knows, maybe we'll do better. You know, and then I don't think they did much better, but they kept that on another year because I think they didn't have anything to replace it. Wow. It's not as sexy to say, but I think that's what happened. Yes, Lisa? Right on. Like the, when, I, when our show didn't get picked up, it was five shows not getting picked up. Yeah. Paul Rodriguez, right? Yep. And uh, Paul Rodriguez, his son, and Cheech. Yep. Al Gina Madrigal. Gina Al, Al, Al Madrigal. Al Madrigal show too? What? The, the, you're talking about this year with ours? This year's, yeah. yeah. Al Madrigal had a show with uh, someone uh, that I know, Al. And Gabriel too? Gabriel had one. Gina Brion. Had one. Uh, Gina had one. Gina had one. And the uh, and Dominican guy too. Angela, Angela Johnson had a show too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what's I think it because Trump got elected. I think I think that um, there were a lot of Latino shows this year. Like and five, think, that's more, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think it's hard because the election happened, and I think people realized that they had been forgetting about a whole other group of people that maybe watch TV, and they had to race to see if that need needed to be filled. I think that the challenge every year is 
how do you do a show that's Latino that people think that everybody will watch? And I make think, me a veteran. Right there, you go. You should. I should have. I should have been a U.S. veteran. Yeah. Bro, living in a shack. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. By the way, with conservative wrong with conservative views that don't even make sense. <laughs> How about conspiracy theories? Too? Yeah, it'll be a funny one, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. We'll do that, bro. Yeah, let's do that. So I think I think it's that, and I also think it's hard because I think that when you put something on the air that doesn't work, it makes it harder for people to then they, to step up and try again. They get risk adverse, um, and so I think it's that. But I think something will happen. Look, Lopez got a second season. One day at a time, got a second season, and you know that's great. One day at a time. That's on Netflix. Yep, and uh, so we'll see. Maybe next year. I try not to be bitter about that stuff because I got to go. Go work, huh? Right. Yeah. That's your world. You live in it. Yeah. I don't we, we got a guy who's actually in the business, bro. Working. We got fucking comedians crying every day, bro. <laughs> in shitty ass rooms. They don't get Latinos a chance, dog, without even being in there. And they don't actually know what's really going on, too. So it's like, you yeah. know, a wildcat opinion. Yeah. Do you think in those five shows that were, do you think there's any similarities? Do you think there's any stuff that's been like a, a, oh, oh, original, sure. a bro. reoccurring theme that's always been? Oh, Latino sure. Shirt, I, but I, I think I think I'm going to talk about, I'm going to answer your question. I want to talk about a movie I saw last night. Okay. Called Low Riders. Oh, my God. I walked out of the trailer on that one. <laughs> oh, buddy. Not even one only song. I can't oh, believe it. Oh, my God. So I went and took my boy to Man's yesterday, Chinese. They're all fancy Hollywood, eh? <laughs> yeah, right? Validated parking, dude. Uh, four people in the movie theater. Four? Me, him, two other people. They got free tickets. Opening, I was done. Mid- by, I actually got up in the middle of it, and I was like, and you're into cars. I'm into cars. And I was like, I got up in the middle of it. And I told Joaquin, I was like, hey, I got some emails and I got to take a leave. <laughs> so like, Hollywood. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna head out to the lobby. <laughs> and like in 10 minutes, if you are into it, let's let's bounce. So like I let's went out bounce. and like 10 minutes later, I hit him up and I'm like, I'm ready. And he goes, well, you know, they're making a new car because the other one, what happened to the other one? And like, maybe we should stay to just see how the new car looks. And I was like, all right. So I went in and finished the movie. Pit and, my ride. And, and yeah, and I was like, okay. So we got in the car to go home. And he was like, that started out okay. And then it got really bad. And then it didn't end badly. It was pretty okay at the end. And he goes, what do you think happened there? And I was like, it felt like I was watching a movie by people who mean well. They want to give a leg up. But they don't necessarily know what to do besides that. I'm talking about producers or studios. So it ends up being somebody like the three of us that they go, we're going to make a movie for you guys. We get very excited and we're like, what do you want? We, we're so excited that you're going to write a check for us. What do you want? What do you want? And so we're going to feed them what we think they want and what they think they want, which is like a fractured father-son relationship and then a mom that's dead and a tribute to the mom and a tattoo and like the white girl joined the hood the white girl comes there's a white like girl like Boulevard friend. Nights you like know big, like fucking my name is like the movie um, Duke of World bro that white girl gets jumped into the hood she has to learn about Latinoisms see and I think so the old I, jokes are back and so I think her fucking parents hate us I think it's all good they did it in La Bamba but then you run after because you feel so grateful that they're going to give us a movie or give you a movie that it, I don't even think it's selling out. You're just excited. And so you're like, oh, well, will you like this? And it takes a special story or project. And it's kind of like the thing we did with Dustin that you go, no, this is going to be what we're going to do. And then when they say in the 11th hour, Trump got elected, is there a way that you can make this more red state? With the producers we had, with my managers, we kind of go, we're good. Like, we we, we don't want to run after it that hard. We'd love to be on the air, but we, we don't know. Because other people I knew were doing, like, last-minute rewrites to try to move something into, like, we'll move it into a red state and we'll make a, an in-law be somebody who's Republican and stuff like that. And we were like, this is a story that we, we speaks to everybody and everybody liked and we're going to just stand on that. But it didn't work out yet. Yeah. But it will. It will. Do you think uh, the the story is yet to be told, like an authentic one on network television that hasn't been uh, told so far? Well, I I, I as of yet. maybe have 
more mainstream tastes, but like I kind of loved the first George Lopez show, which really was about George, right? And mm-hmm. his weird bad relationship with his mom and he worked in actually worked in a warehouse yeah and so like i enjoyed that a lot and the first show i did which came on the same year was greetings from tucson it was about me and my dad and my mom being white and that family trying to figure that shit out and i felt like that was really real and uh you know i think i think when you step into it and make it really about yourself you got a better shot and i think some of those shows that don't make it and some of the ones you're talking about are you ask me like what are the sums you see all the time you always see like the married couple that one culture is not agreeing with the other culture or you see somebody who's um you know trying to an immigrant story or you see there's certain things you hear a lot about that you go well what's the what's the cool part Damn. yeah man I don't know. Is that any good? No, no, that's a great, great. It's a good answer, but it's not hilarious. Right. But also, the executives have an idea of what SNL is, and you you guys have a different idea because you live it, and then they don't come together quite well. They don't. But then, but then, I mean, give props to ABC, even though they didn't film our show. We're in the room. We go pitch all networks. All networks. In within three days, right? And. I don't know, except for at CBS, if there was a Latino exec in the room. But at ABC, we're sitting in the room, and we start talking about our lady mariachis, and the executive, we got one sentence. Everywhere else we go, we have to explain who they are. We said who they were, and Lynn Barry, who was our ABC executive who bought the show, was like, oh, I know who they are. You can move on. I'm well yeah. aware of them. So, like, what I love is when I say well-meaning people, like, she's smart, and she knows that they want a Latino show. So she's out there doing research. She's out there doing her homework, like you said. Yeah, going over my YouTube videos. You know? but And that's right. She also she also mentioned <coughs> your, your, your stand-up very specifically. Yeah. And you go, that's somebody I want to do business with because, you know, she's somebody who wants to get it right. She's trying to get it right. Trying. Well, that's good. The but they told her no. <laughs> someone did. Someone did. Yeah, and I think because it's Hollywood, someone told her not yet. Because I don't think anybody ever says no. What's up, fool? Yeah. What's up? What? Uh, I really like this shirt. Oh, Fred Perry. Yeah, it's a very sharp. Yeah, it's a little. Uh, the Marshall. Give it here, bro. Take it off. It'll be too big. I'm sorry. Oh, it will be. Give some Willie, bro. Ask you for a shirt. Hey, bro. When are these guys going to stop begging, bro? Oh, my God. <laughs> this is so good. Now, has he heard you do this? Uh, I think before, but he kind of got a little like, yeah, looking mad at me all weird. Bro, I don't sound oh, really? like that dog. Yeah. <laughs> Aw. Most of the people when I do impressions, like, I don't sound like that. Really? Yeah. I'm a tape recorder. Give some Al Madrigal, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, give me some Al. The cost, okay? <laughs> I forgot. I-, I used to do his voice, but I mean, I c- got to see him real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you seen him on the... Uh, the HBO show? I haven't seen it yet. No, we're having, we had him on before. No, yeah, I just seen, uh, the last time I seen it was a special that he did. But you know he's on this new HBO show. Oh, yeah. the one Showtime, uh, right? Showtime. The Showtime? Is it Showtime? I'm dying up here. I'm dying yeah, yeah, up yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen it? No, but read the book. Freddie Prince. Is he playing Freddie Prince or is he playing a guy like Freddie Prince? Like Freddie like Prince, like Paul Rodriguez. Okay. Yeah. He sells drugs. <laughs> That's what he said. He's the, the, the Latino? The Escobar of comedy. Uh-huh. Yeah, man. Um, what do you think? Well, tell me, you're watching TV. What do you think? What do you think they're not doing right? I just don't think that um, even in film and in TV, I don't think that Latino show that like can um, at least you know pierce the veil to say that like white middle America and even like Latinos like in the West Coast in the East Coast go goddamn I know someone like that someone like that's real or something more of a setup you know what I mean Yeah yeah there's yeah There's a cactus There's a little Well here's something that... I gotta ask you because you travel everywhere You travel everywhere. <clears throat> so I just went to Ohio to get my boy, and we drove back home. We drove through Indiana, Illinois, uh, Kansas, Nebraska, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, California, and Nevada. And we made it a game. We would stop into a town. We'd stop into a town, Lima something, Lima, Nebraska, whatever, 5,000 people. Mexican food restaurant right there. Everywhere. And I'm like, they're here, they're here, they're here, right there, There's a, there it is. And so it's like, you think to yourself sometimes when we pitch shows that people are like, well, it's gotta be set 
in this part of the country or somebody in marketing goes, well, if we put it on the air, how do we appeal to anybody besides the South? Felipe owns a Mexican restaurant. You know? <laughs> in the Midwest. But you're like, in the Midwest, there it's everywhere. So you go like, it is kind of there. It just has to be sold to somebody that gets it. Right. And that's the that's tough part about it. Yeah. 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 The authenticity factor. Are you guys watching Lopez? No. I watched the first one. It was first cool. one? Yeah. Yeah. What's the trick? Mm-hmm. We don't have cable. <laughs> ah, I don't have cable. You know what? I'll give you my Academy disc. I'll my watch TV it. Academy disc. Hell yeah. Um, but I, I love that because he's doing, he's playing him. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, totally. He's Just not doing a, him now. Not, not a great guy. He's made some <laughs> mistakes. Can't make things work. Like, I, I, I love that. The day in the life of. Yeah. Um, Pretty cool. That's what we should do. Yeah. We should do, we should do, uh, you're a veteran. You live in a shack. Right? Yeah. And you work for George Lopez. I don't yes. know how yet. Something like that. <laughs> they call me veterano. <laughs> <laughs> and so do, you, right. do you have a wheelchair? Yeah. And uh, But you can walk? But you have the wheelchair just yeah. for respect? For respect. For the, for the checks. You can keep coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you sometimes go to a church? Not your church, but you go to a church, and in the middle of the service, you stand up. Like they cured you and only when they're out. selling the the the, go, the the God's water, <laughs> <laughs> the power of Christ yeah. compels. So you're writing for um, Superior Donuts. Superior Donuts. Yeah. So you saw Joe Diaz. I did. He came in and did a day, man. It's nice to see you, cocksucker. You know what I'm oh saying? Oh my God, he was so good. <laughs> he was so good. He played a part that he came in on the very last minute to do, and it had like two lines, and they basically were like. Hey, do you want to take a walk with me? And we're going to go over here to this meeting. Um, and all week long, we had a stand in to them. And they were supposed to be mock threatening and have other characters go, holy shit, what's going on? And uh, the whole time, because I think he was on the road or something, like Jermaine and uh, Maz kept telling everybody, like, don't change those lines. Don't worry about it. When Joey gets here, it'll work. Bring it to life. And he came and it was chilling. Right when he walks in, oh, dude, he's fucking fantastic. Yeah. How'd you, you do it, Joey? Bro, I'm just acting myself, Felipe. What do you want me to do? This is what I do. That's it. <laughs> give me a fucking line, bro. I'll give it life. That's it. What else you want from me, bro? You give a lot of lines la- live, though. That's what I fucking do. I'm like fucking the, t- the touch of Christ, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm with the good thief and the bad thief, you know what I'm saying? I think about it a little bit. I take a shower. I develop the character. And I go in there and fucking kill it. You now, are you, Italian, Sorry, are you Italian, Joey? Are you Italian? Because you sound more Italian. At least I did it on recorder, but none of this was recorded, bro. You know what I'm saying? With the golden Jew, it doesn't matter because God is recording. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, let's move forward. I also on. work with Hugh Moore. Hugh Moore, bro. <laughs> One you of the writers on Moore, the show. Bro. You want some Hugh Moore? <laughs> he doesn't say shit. Uh, give me some shy Tony, dog. Shy Tony. Oh man. And uh, Dan Saint Germain. You know him? No, I don't. No, we don't He's another stand up. Uh, He's in the other circuit. Right on. You know what I mean? Do. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. What's so fool? What you, what you got coming up? Nothing. Just this show. Uh, we'll be at Irvine. Fucking. We got uh, Riverside on Wednesday with Armando Cosillo and uh, myself, special guest. And uh, yeah, man. Check out the. What yeah, show podcast. are you working on? Superior Donuts. That's it right now? That's it. You still driving the old car, the black one? Oh, yeah. 75 Plymouth. Oh, shit. drive the old ass Paisa Nar car, bro. Yeah. <laughs> 75 Plymouth, man. He still lives in the state neighborhood. The police still stop him, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, K? You know what I did buy, though? Who's this that right here? I just bought a new truck. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Love it. What kind of truck? Sorry you couldn't buy your truck with our show, bro. <laughs> yeah. F-150, man. Just a, just a jive truck, man. Just a Ford truck. Is that what you have? Uh, no, I have a Toyota Tacoma. Nice little, truck. Little, little economical nice truck. Uh, nice truck. aluminum engine, yeah. 400 miles yeah, yeah. per tank. What are you driving? I'm not driving nothing, bro. <laughs> you not we allowed? have a Prius. <laughs> yeah? And a Volvo. You got a Volvo? You yeah, made a, a it, man. A station wagon. My, oh, this man. This is my third Volvo, man. I've had three it? Volvos in my life. That's oh, a made car. The of death and the other one. There's more Volvos in my neighborhood than the cars I got. Yeah. For sure. Hell yeah, man. Um, I got two more questions. What? Go for it. All right, my second question. I'm going to leave with my second question and then end with my first question because I don't, you know, I messed it up already. But uh, um, what's your favorite city to play? Do you have like a favorite club or a favorite city? Probably the Northwest, Portland, Portland, Spokane. Seattle. 
Yakima. Okay. I can actually say Spokane this is the last time. Spokane. Fuck, really? Off the What's great road. about that city? Just not hot. Yeah. And the, 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 it's the other shows are sold out. You know, everybody loves the show. Also, Texas good. Oh, yeah, always. Houston. But also, a big surprise, too, is Utah, dog. Salt Utah, Lake. too. Yeah, really? we sold out shows in Utah, Every, yeah. think everybody's Mormon and uptight. Oh, my God. The crowds are fucking yeah? awesome, dude. Oh, my God. Was Tampa was good, too. Bomb, dude. I just drove through Tampa. Utah, and I drove into these tiny towns because I heard this podcast about Mormon separatists that still practice polygamy. Yeah, they do. Polygamy, polygamy. You. <laughs> and I went to, uh, I went with, I went into this tiny town where they, it's still happening. And it was crazy, man. There was, there was no lie. There was a cafe called the Merry Wives Cafe. Oh wow! And I'm like, it's right out there in the sign. They're not even trying to hide it. It's crazy, crazy. Um, and then uh, my boy wanted to stop in at the temple and get a Book of Mormon and talk to him, because I think he's like, doesn't understand the religion. He just likes the idea of like a lot of wives. <laughs> but, uh, I don't think he knows yet. Um, and then my next question is Mariachi uh, Manchester. Yeah. I love them. What are they doing? What's happening? Are they they're huge? They're touring. They're not yeah. huge. Huh? They're huge. They, they have they're their new. audience. They're so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're so good. Old. Dude, they're bad as hell. What's your deal, Matt? You. Oh, yeah, my show. Oh, your show. Like, they were good. I huh? bought a shirt. <clears throat> yeah, I got Me one too. Too. Yeah, they're and I'm tight. like, I want to I wanna support them. Like, what? Are they, we need to help them. They're, they're on tour right now. I think they were opening up for Chicano Batman a couple of shows. I made that up. <laughs> I thought I they were though, because they or toured. Las Cafeteras was. Yeah, right after, right before they did the show with you over there at the Nobo, they toured Mexico. Yeah, they toured Mexico. They're You're good. It up all. They're bad as hell. They're really it's, good. So I like the whole little acoustic version of it. You know, yeah. no plugins and all that shit. And it's then, so uh, good, so good, uh, so rich. The uh, the Moz. Yeah. Morris. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um uh uh. Do I need to like uh, do anything else? Did I did I mess it up? How'd I do? To what? No, you're great, dude. I just want to make sure man. I'm doing okay. You're doing good, bro. You have a you have a podcast that you do as well, right? The Remarkables or I something? I do. That's funny that you bring that up. We're, we're kind of on the hiatus right now, but yeah. Eight episodes. You and yeah. who? Um, I produce it. My friend Ezra is the host, and it's a podcast that's sort of like uh, half written, half improvised, that's about two people that are fascinated with superheroes. Like they really exist. And then the background the stories to everything, And the right? background stories are like, hey, did you hear we saw this guy took this building down, and now we've got a henchman to come in and tell us what it's like being a henchman. And we've got a sidekick who's been kicked out that's going to tell us about being a sidekick. Or like uh, we had a woman come in whose job was as a book rep to rep uh, an autobiography of a superhero that also sexually molested her. And uh, so it's sort of like Superman Remarkable. meets Cosby. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like a weird fiction kind of show that is a little bit of reality and a little bit of fiction. That's badass, dude. It does have a little fantasy bent to it. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I just a little yeah, fantasy even the thing we even did. Even the pilot, yeah. Even the thing we did. I always like feeling a little, like a little extra. Makes it a little less than just regular. For sure. You know? Like we had our little, our ladies. Yeah, it was good. I, traveling around, singing about Love you. my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> and, uh, you know, I think what you know we need to do is see if we can get, uh, I think we need to get Eva Longoria to play uh, the sister, and then we'll be on TV. Yeah, we will. <laughs> That'll be tight. So she yeah, listens, a, right? Yeah. She's a listener. She's so a listener like, of the podcast. Shout out to Corpus Christi. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. She's the lowrider. Oh, she yeah. is. She was the best thing in lowrider if she's listening. <laughs> see? Yeah, man. <laughs> What's up, fool? Peter Murrieta in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, man. Shout out to him and his grandfather who pretended to speak Spanish. <laughs> Is that a true story? Oh, my grandfather? Yeah. He's my great, 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 great grandfather. He would pretend to speak. Uh, um, he, he would. Pretend would, he don't know English, huh? He pretended he didn't know English. He was a bandit, and he would pretend he didn't know English, and ride into a town, and see, you know, if the posse was looking for him. And uh, he would join the posse, and then if they did know where his hideouts were, he'd kill everybody. And then if they didn't know, he'd ride away and you know keep. They made a highway out to him, right? Hmm. They that did. That highway right here on uh, the fourteen. Is it? Yeah, the is bank there a robber. Of it? 
Is there Murrieta, a stretcher? right? The, the, bar, the, bar, the, the bank robber? There's a couple of right, places. I know there's like a north. town called Murrieta. There is, but that's not named yeah. after him. Okay. But up it's north, the highway on, on a 14. Okay, maybe. Is that maybe. Palmdale, they Lancaster? Chased them, they they the chased them, yeah. They chased them off the 14 and killed them there. And they named a the little highway oh, area that's right. after him. And there's a little plaque by it. Because yeah, they yeah. mentioned him on Blood In, Blood Out. Really? Oh, they do? Well, that's Joaquin yeah. Murrieta. See, that's my Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wasn't even, I heard he wasn't even Mexican. Is that true? No, he was. Oh, he was? Okay. He was. He was, he was from Sonora. <laughs> he was from Sonora. Sonora. My, my people are from, from Sonora. See? Sinaloa. My, uh, my Chincheras was a tiny village, tiny village. And, uh, Chincheras. My, uh, <laughs> my, uh, my son's name, Joaquin. Oh, righteous, dude. That's oh. awesome. Um, What's up, fool? Peter Murrieta right here, man. We, we just touched the surface. We'll have him there back you. again, man. Thank you very much, brother. Oh, Tell I us about Willie back. Barcena at the at the fucking baseball games. <laughs> banned from Murray Park. He's banned from parks, I heard, right? Uh, he has a temper, man. He has a temper. What are you talking about, bro? Oh. What's up, fool? <laughs> that was good. Oh, you guys are killing me, dog. <laughs> 